Okay, thanks for coming to my channel. Um, I have a pet peeve of mine. Uh, I, I've always worked as a software developer, but um, yeah, I like to work on my own car. I, I guess basically I, I'm sort of like a lot of people. I, I really, I really don't trust what people do, especially if you go in after you've seen what people do or what mechanics do or haven't done with things. Just simply, you know, putting on. You know, just cleaning something off when you pull it apart and re-lubing it before you put it together. Uh, where you, where you, if you see the mechanics, a lot of times they will, uh, you know, just throw things because they're under pressure, time pressure, and and you just don't see the kind of care. So, so I've always been the type of person done who's done things like this myself. Now, also, if you do that and you like to do things yourself, you realize that there is this big thing to contend with, and it is the ODB OBD. Uh, system the onboard diagnostic system right ob obd2 to be specific since what 1993 or 92 or something and basically this is a protocol right it defines a bunch of things that are so that that all cars at least in the united states and um let's just say let's just keep it simple let's say in the united states you all cars after a certain year i think 93 are supposed to support this protocol and it helps uh, to to make inspection and other things ver very easy um, and uniform across the board. But if you like to work on your own car, you realize that there is this this big question of do you have a bi-directional scanner, right? Do you have a bi-directional scanner? And w w it's like, what do you mean bi-directional? Well, bi-directional is a folklore term. It doesn't mean what people actually think it means. Let me explain something. If you have a satellite in the air and you have a person on the ground with a cell phone, right? The satellite broadcasts in every direction just data in conjunction with other satellites and you with your phone you receive from different satellites it triangulates and boom this is where you are but here's the thing this is unidirectional right your phone does not communicate it, you run out of power in like three seconds right because they're so far away but these broadcasts your cell phone fix up picks up these faint signals and boom it works same situation if you're sitting there watching tv right and you have your controller in your hand, your remote control. This is unidirectional. It was only going to the TV. The TV does not communicate back to you, just like your phone does not communicate back to the satellites. These are examples of unidirectionality, okay? Now, every single one of these devices is bidirectional. So, oh, no, that's not true because I can't control this right now. No, no, okay. If I have my ODB2 device here, oh, I keep saying it wrong, and you have your car here, right? Whatever. Yeah, no, I'm just drawing a car. In order to get your error codes from your car, this has to say to the car, hey, I want something, a specific piece of data from you. The car says, do whatever, and responds back, okay? This is bidirectional. Okay, no matter what anybody tells you, every single one of these devices is bi-directional. Okay, there is nothing special about controlling uh, the position of of your butterfly valve on your carburetor, your your uh, uh, what you call it, or or all of the other types of controls that you can manipulate. Some cars you can even open and close the windows. Uh, and I know there's a, there's a ton more things that you can do that are considered bi-directional. But I can tell you that has nothing to do with bi-directionality. And in fact, if I want to open or close um, the valve, the, the, geez, why, why is that uh, the, the escaping me? You know, the valve on your, <laughs> the, the air intake. If you want to adjust the valve body position, um, that in fact doesn't even need to be bi-directional. You can just tell the car, go to this position and what you're going to get back might be the, I don't really know at this point this is one of the things that I want to figure out but it doesn't matter whether you get something back it's that the command goes to the car and that the car understands the command you can ignore the response or you can listen for the response but in any case all of these devices are bi-directional and I've been experimenting with this a little bit now here's here's an example of I wired up obviously this is not connected to a car 
but it's, you know, it's my jig so that I can plug these things in. Now, one is Wi-Fi. This one is, um, is Bluetooth, and then I have one that's USB, right? But the USB and the Bluetooth are basically the same, so I use the Bluetooth because it's easier, right? So, now, the thing is that your computer or whatever device that you're using to talk to these things is is based on basically they're all using the same equipment and here's this chip ELM 327 okay this I would bet is in 90 probably 90 I mean maybe all of them but I'm sure there's some some outliers out there that may use their own proprietary chip but this chip you're gonna find in pretty much every dongle whether you're talking fifty dollars a hundred dollars five hundred dollars a thousand dollars or five thousand or ten thousand dollars you're probably gonna find this chip in that in that device so the idea of bi-directionality has nothing to do with the hardware you say well that's not true because I can't get it to work well let me show you something about the specs in here right you go to page 63 here okay this is a programming serial numbers now, by the way, I wrote a piece of software. I'm going to make it available to everybody because I really want to knock this out. I want the, the normal average person who can't afford $5,000 worth of equipment to be able to have, quote unquote, bi-directional control. Okay, not quite there yet, but hey, I'm not dead yet either. So, this is a piece of software. Let me disconnect. And this piece of software is connected to that dongle I just showed you. So it's I know that it's COM4. The, um, uh, the Bluetooth has configured as COM4. So let me connect to that. And scan support. Okay, so it found this. Okay, now I'm going to go over to diagnostics. And here's a list of the functionalities that I have right now. If I do something like get VIN, it's going to come back with a can or it's going to say, hey, look, I, I can't because it's not connected to the car. Right. I have it in I have it over here in this dongle. Right. So all this dongle is doing is right. None of none of the wire, only the, the power is hooked up. OK, so this device itself is its own. I'm talking to that chip. So right now on the computer, I'm going to try to get the VIN again. Right. You see that and again, again. Right. So so what's happening is this is having a conversation with my dongle. Let me uh, I'm going to do a reset device. Boom. OK, so let's come back. Now, when I say reset device, it's it's reporting back the this information, which I it's just customized. Right. Because the supply voltage, for example, I think it's in here somewhere. Where, oh, where, oh, where? Oh, I don't know where the heck it is. Okay, get description, for example. Okay, it's going to return that. Uh, what the heck was the, um, the... Oh, get the voltage, right? Okay, 11 volts. So, I can actually talk to the device itself. Now, this is bi-directional right here without even being hooked up to the car. So, oh, no, but it's about the car. No, 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 no. Notice, when I go to get the VIN, how could it be... How could it not be bi-directional if the VIN doesn't come back, right? I'm saying to the device, get me the VIN. The device say, oh, I can't because there's a CAN error, okay? So these are all bi-directional, okay? What the real problem is, is that the CAN network, nobody has a scanner that actually talks on the CAN network. Okay, so let, let, let's, let's, let's slow down a little bit about that. We're not going to get into the whole networking in the car. What I want to show you is I want to show you something that's very interesting. Uh, let me go back to here. If I ask for the serial number, where is this? Uh, get serial number. Whoop, it gives me a question mark. Now I'm asking, not the car doesn't have a C car has a VIN, right? But this device, all the, and it ha has a place where you can put a serial number. Okay, so let me go to the spec sheet. Programming serial numbers. Okay, I haven't programmed serial number. Okay, the reason I haven't is because this number can never be altered once it is entered. Okay, here's an example where they're programming it to, you know, whatever, my board, whatever. Okay, this 
if you send the command to a new integrated circuit, you will receive an error that looks like that. And that's exactly what I'm getting, right? Because I haven't, I have not programmed the serial number. So when I go to get it, it gives me a question mark. Now, here is why people think that the hardware that costs $5,000 is special. Because when I'm a company and I'm selling you my software that talks not only to the ODB, but to the network in the car controlling all of these things that we typically call bi-directional, I'm setting myself up so that I put in some special serial number that only the software will work with. So if I use one of these other dongles with my expensive software that's been configured for a specific one that can't be altered once it's programmed, then you can see, I can sell you something, I can sell you a piece of software, I can configure it, and I can program the dongle, I send you the dongle, or I keep calling it the dongle, I guess, with, you know, the, the, you know, when I say dongle, I mean these things, right? I, I, mean, I mean these things. I can, I can program one of these with a very specific serial number, and then I configure my software, I put them together, and I send it to you, and I say, oh, look how special this is. Look how strong and important this is. When all it is is I, I've just made sure my software will work with nothing but the particular dongle I've sent you. And then in that case, I can program my software to do whatever, to, to have this quote-unquote bidirectionality. Okay, so the, the first thing that we all need to understand is that the, the, the myth of bidirectionality is really a, a, a story of company proprietary... <laughs> You know, a story of being, uh, um, uh, of being exclusive uh, about the hardware being configured with the software, and then that way we have our software locked down. And then we have people walking around on the earth thinking, oh, well, you know, these cheap dongles, and, and they are cheap. I don't think I paid more than $20 for any of these things. Uh, the, people are under the impression that these cannot do all of the functionality that the expensive ones can, and that is a lie, it's just a lie. You say, oh, no, 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 you don't understand. No, I do understand, okay? I wrote this software myself. I didn't get it from somewhere. I, of course, I had to do a lot of uh, good coolant tests. that's gonna give you a can error. Now, I'll do a video where this is actually getting values back, um, but the, the point right now is I just need to break the, the oh, I'm sorry, I didn't transition you know, get cool in temperature, I just said, right? It's giving me a can error. So I, I just, I, um, I'll show this with a car, but I wanted to make a video because I needed to break the myth that by direction, first of all, what by directionality is, that all scanners, every single scanner that you can buy is by directional. It's just whether or not the software is going to do it and whether or not we're willing to give it to you for a cheap price. Now, you have me. I know how to build this kind of stuff, and then we're going to make it. We're going to figure out how to do this. I have a Chevy and a Ford out there, and I'm going to at least figure out how to do some, some quote-unquote bidirectional functionality, which is really just talking to the CAN network, just sending data into the CAN or, or whatever the particular network is that we're talking about there. Now, I know as a, as, as a person who likes to work on my car, I don't like to be limited. And I certainly don't like to be limited by just folklore. So this, one of my purposes here is to get rid of this folklore, okay? And this right here, this ELM27 device is what, here, see, all, see how we're supporting these different interfaces and network types? Okay, so this thing, this ODB onboard diagnostics, not only supports all your standard, <clears throat> excuse me, your standard diagnostic functions, but also can give you, give you access to all of these different types of protocols. And if you looked at this, and you can find this, this is easy to find, ELM327 spec. You just look at this, it'll blow your mind, all the stuff. Look at it, all of the things involved. And, and it's, it's pretty thick because just configuring this to operate can can get kind of kind of you know kind of busy 
So, but this is the kind of thing I've been doing for like many, many years. I've been looking at electronics and, and software for a long time. And just to give you a quick, here is my, my code um, that, that, I've, that I'm writing with. Um, I call it Auto Scanner App. Um, it's a WPF application. Um, here is my actual guts of it. Here's the ELM 327, right? So, so what you do is you write software that's sort of very specific to the to, to the device, and it, it deals with serial port, pin change, read and write, and and what happens to stuff that comes in and out of the buffer, and and what happens. Um, um, you know, when we receive data, come on, yeah, like, for example, this right here is a function. When data comes back, what do we do with this data? And then we send it off to somewhere, somewhere else. Here's ODB2 device. Here, look, here, these are the functions that I've, that, that I am, work, that I've, that I've set up so far. Um, here, here's an example. You might have recognized these. These come right out of the spec sheet. And some of these are actually a little bit of a, uh, little bit more work to get running, you know, fuel percentage. I mean, I wrote all this stuff. I, I did all this code. Um, oh, there's just, there's another big, where, where is it? There's a big, where I handle all this. Anyway, anyway, I'm just saying that I have written software. I'm going to make this available, and I'll put a link right in the description. You can download this. Um, it's over at a website it's called thoughtpill.com just like my uh, YouTube name here. Um, and you can do these really basic things um, right away. Oh, geez, I connected to the Wi-Fi, which doesn't exist. Anyway, um, so what am I doing? I don't know. I'm trying to keep myself busy in between jobs. I, I'm not working right now, so, um, you know, I need to keep myself busy. So I have some websites I'm messing with and, and I write this software, and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a busybody kind of person. I like to have my hands on things. And I know that this bi-directional OBD2 stuff is really bothering a lot of people. It's, it's, it's like, you know, our favorite, our favorite uh, Scotty in South Maine, all of our favorite auto channels, you know, they have all these expensive devices, and it's like, jeez, man, I, I wish I could just, it would be cool just to go to your car, right, and just be able to open and close your throttle, and I, I just keep going back to that same thing, or turn on and off fans in your, you know, just to make sure your fans work, but we can't do that because we don't want to spend five grand just to make that happen, but you know what, I think we can. I think I can, I think I can make that happen. I need to work a little bit more, and, and, and develop a way where we can see what's happening on that bus so that you can take this software and you can say, hey, look, I think this is the, you know, this is the code to, to do this or that. Um, because what we can do is we can actually see what's happening on these buses on, on, inside of your car and we can see what's happening on the network and simply come out from the outside and make it happen through the software, I think. Kind of theoretical. The bidirectional stuff is not theoretical. Um, it is, they are all bi-directional, and it's just whether your software is willing to do it or not. Okay, so I just wanted to sort of get that out of the way. I, it's a little this way and that way, a little kind of messy and everything, and, but um, I want to make this available uh, because the only thing stopping you from doing anything is your mind, right? And you know, so, okay, I don't know. Let me not get too philosophical. So... There it is. Uh, stay tuned. More to come. Thanks for watching.